What's going on everybody, Nick here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to optimize your Google Sheets operations usage in make.com. I'm gonna show you how you can add thousands of rows consuming just one operation using a nifty little API hack that I recently found out. So if you wanna improve your operational efficiency with make.com, if you wanna save a little bit of money for yourself or for your clients, this is the video for you. Stay tuned and let's get into it. All right, so here is our task. We are getting a bunch of information from a web service called Appify. This is like a web scraper that enables us to find leads and you know source uh, information off of websites and stuff like that. And what I wanna do is I wanna take all of this information, which right now is first name, uh, LinkedIn profile, title, um, you know, country and, and that sort of thing. And I wanna dump all this into a Google Sheet. Why? I don't know. Maybe some member of my team is using this Google Sheet. Maybe this is like an intermediary step before I upload it into a cold email platform. Whatever the specific use case is, that's what we have to do. And in the past, the way that this would work is, okay, let's hypothetically pretend that I am scraping, let me just use 100 operations, screw it. Um, what I have to do in the past is if I click run once, what's gonna happen here is this is gonna go through cycling down the entire list of leads that I've generated and then dump this into this Google Sheet one operation um, or one row at a time. And you know, if I wanted to put in 100 of these, right, because this uh, module outputted 100 bundles, I'd have to previously consume a whole 100 operations to do so. And I just did because I love you all. Um, we're at 75 right now. You can imagine how if you had multiple modules in this scenario, you could consume a lot of our operations really quick. Like let's say on top of this, you had I don't know, another two or another three. Um, let's say in total we had five modules in this flow. That's something like 400 or 500 operations. That adds up, right? Even if you run that once per day, you're already over the limits of like the make.com pro plan and you're already having to start to dig in your wallet a fair amount. So. You know, we don't want to have to do this anymore. We don't want to have to manually go row by row by row. Uh, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you a better way. And the way that we're going to do this is using the make.com and Google Sheets API module. So I'm going to go down here to the bottom right hand corner where it says Google Sheets. I'm going to give that a click. And what I want to do is scroll all the way down to the bottom to where it says make an API call. Now, you do not need to know how to do any sorts of computer programming in order to make this module work. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open up the syntax on another screen, and then that way I can run through this just like you would be for your very first time. And then instead of this, I'm just gonna unlink this module. I'm gonna drag in the make an API call uh, module instead. We're gonna say bulk add to sheet. So remember this flow right here, this consumed 101 operations, okay? By the end of this, I'm gonna show you how to do the same thing uh, in, I believe, three operations total. Okay, so bulk add to sheet, I'm stick this in right here. First thing that we have to do is we have to add a URL. If you're unfamiliar with what the URL of your sheet is, um, I'm gonna give you a quick and easy formula that you can use right here. And I'm also gonna include all this information just in the video description. So if you need to copy and paste it, feel free. You're also gonna get all of this stuff in the blueprint and you'll just be able to swap out your own. So uh, first of all, the first parameter in the URL is you need to put in spreadsheets and then you need to go slash. And what you need to do is you actually need to find the specific sheet that you're interested in. So um, we found the sheet that we're interested in and then we have to go to the URL, go backslash D slash. What you want is you want the section between backslash D slash and then the section um, uh, that's backslash edit. And you wanna copy that, that is your spreadsheet ID. We're gonna go back into our URL here and then I'm going to do another slash. Then I'm gonna write values like this. And then you have um, what's called the range parameter. Uh, the range is usually A to Z, unless you have more than Z columns in your spreadsheet. So in my case, uh, I'm only using what, four out of the 26 available ones in Z. But hypothetically, if I added another column to the right, notice how we just looped around to AA. If I do it again, now we're at AB. If I do it again, then we're at AC. So these additional columns here, like if you had data in these columns, if you have a header, um, you know, you wouldn't be able to just do A to Z. You'd have to do probably A to AZ or something like that instead. But I'm going to leave that for now. We're just going to do simple A to Z stuff because most people don't have more than 26 columns in their spreadsheet. And then the last thing you need to do is you need to add another colon and then you need to use the word append. This is just the Google Sheets API. You know, you don't have to be a programming professional, as I mentioned, in order to make this work. All you need to do is just follow this structure. Next, go to method and then click post. And then you're gonna leave the headers as content type application JSON. We're then gonna go down a query string here. And then for key, what we're going to do is we're gonna go value input option. And then value is going to be user underscore entered, all caps. 
the last thing we have to do is we have to actually add the data itself. And I'm gonna show you how to do this just with a simple example first, and then um, I'll show you how to actually like wrangle up all of the data that we're generating out of this Appify module. But the syntax is you go um, squiggly colon, that has a better name than that, I think. Okay, so curly brace, uh, comma, sorry, curly brace, double quote, um, values, double quote, and then a colon. And then what you wanna do is, just for the purposes of this demonstration, you're gonna do uh, one left square bracket and then another left square bracket, and then one right and then one right, and then another curly bracket. Okay, so everything that I'm showing you here is necessary, um, and this is just templated. Everything from this point onwards is your own data. So the way that this API, I guess, specification works is, Basically, if you have four columns in your sheet, then you need to insert an array that has four values, okay? So you see here it says, um, you know, there's a LinkedIn URL, then there's a title, then there's a first name, then there's a country. Let me just delete all of the rest of these, just as, uh, the, for the purposes of this example. Oops. Okay, great, all deleted. All we have is that one example. Um, I'm gonna add my, myself in here and we're just gonna see what that looks like. Let's hypothetically say my LinkedIn profile is linkedin.com slash IN slash Nicholas Sarayev. That is no longer hypothetical. I'm pretty sure that's my actual LinkedIn profile. Um, what did we have next? We had a title. So my title is, uh, let's say fractional consultant. I don't even know if that's a term, but I'm making it one. Uh, my name is Nick. And then what was that last column on the spreadsheet? Country, right? My country is Canada, okay? So there are four values in this array. That's number one, that's number two, this is number three, and then this is number four. And for every one of these values, uh, we need to have um, a corresponding column here. So now that that's done, I'm gonna click OK. And then just because this is a test, I'm gonna right click this and click run this module only. And if you've put in everything right, you'll get a status code of 200. If we go back here, what you'll see is I've just added in one more row to my spreadsheet. The issue with this is, well, this is still consumed an operation. We only added one row. We don't actually wanna do that. What we wanna do is we wanna add substantially more than one row, right? And this is where you get into text aggregation, which I'm gonna run you guys through um, right now. So if you think about it, if I unlink this, I know I have a bunch of modules spread out over here, but if I run this module only, as we saw previously, we get a ton of um, bundles, right? One, two, three, four, five, all the way down to 100. This module, the get data set items from Appify, happens to output multiple bundles. Not every module is going to do this, but for most purposes, you know, if you're like listing rows from a Google Sheet or you're scraping information or whatever, uh, your data will come in, in such a format. If your data isn't coming in a format, you can make use of the iterator module to take uh, data that is constructed as an array and then to iterate through it and then you know construct multiple bundles like this. Uh, if you guys don't know how to do that or if iterating and aggregating just seems like witchcraft to you, then definitely check out my Iterators and Aggregators Masterclass. By the end of it, you'll know everything you need to know to actually make money with make.com using Iterators and Aggregators. But in this video, I'm gonna run you through a very particular type of aggregator called the Text Aggregator, and I'm gonna show you how it works. Okay, so. Uh, for the purposes of this example, I'm just going to output five because I don't want this to be super lengthy. And then I'm gonna open up this text aggregator. I'm gonna select the source modules, Appify, get data set items. There's only one uh, module here, so that sort of makes sense. And then what we have to do next, we have to construct the text that we're creating. Well, let me give you a quick example. So there, were, there was some data that we wanted to pull in, right? Let me just um, go back to the sheet. We wanted the LinkedIn URL, the title, the first name, and the country. So let me actually go and let me grab all that data. Uh, the LinkedIn URL was here. And I'm just gonna add these vertical lines here, and you'll see why in a second. Title, then we'll do first name, and then I'm going to do uh, country as well. I'm gonna do another space. So we have LinkedIn URL, space, vertical line, space, title, space, vertical line, space, first name, space, vertical line, space, country, okay? And I just wanna show you what this looks like when you run it. It's gonna give you a warning here because uh, purple modules are transformers. That's all right, just exit that out. And after, if we click on the output, what we'll see is what we've basically done is we've gone through the five bundles that we provided as input, and then we've just concatenated them all together, aka we've just added them together. Now, this is not in any format that we could use via like an API call, right? Because this is a format that I just whipped out of my ass. I said, screw it, I want vertical lines in between each entry. But if you think about it, 
what you could do with this text aggregator is you could you could use the same functionality that generated us this string here to generate an array that feeds in to the bulk make an API call module. You can construct this in the right format that it likes um, so that you know you can you can actually use this as part of the API call. How do you do this? Well, it's pretty simple. First you use a square bracket on the left, just like we did there, and then you wrap everything in quotes. And then you add a comma, a space, comma, a space, and then a comma, and then we close it. And this is now what this looks like. We have a LinkedIn URL, which is wrapped in quotes, a title, which is wrapped in quotes, a first name, which is wrapped in quotes, and then a country. Um, and that last one does not have a quote because if it ends in an array, right, that's the last value we don't put, um, sorry, we don't put a comma at the end. Okay, there's one more thing we have to do and that's we have to go to row separator and then click other and then just type a comma. And this is just part of the formatting. This is just how we need to do this in order to make this work. But if I run this example now and actually look into it, this is what our output is now. We have an array with four values, LinkedIn up here, title here, first name here, and then the country. If you think, or if you think back to our example, this matches our template or our layout basically perfectly, right? Um, and then we have, uh, I think I put in an extra space or something like that, which I didn't have to, so I'm gonna go back and fix that. But then you have a space, then a comma, and then you have another one. Then you have another one, then you have another one, and just sort of like over and over and over again um, until you know we, we finish the data set, which is awesome. So let me just see uh, why we had that right. I actually added an extra space in there, so I'm just gonna remove that space. And then what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna connect this over to our bulk add to sheet module, and we're actually gonna work with live data this time instead of fake data. So you see down here where it says values. What we have to do is we just have to format this now to delete our old um, array. Then all we have to do is just stick our new array in between these two brackets. Because basically what's happening is we're feeding it in an array of arrays. So everything inside of text here, this is gonna be our array. And then we need to wrap that array of arrays in this, um, this square bracket. So I'm gonna click okay. And then just to show you guys the power of this, I'm gonna go back to, uh, so I'm gonna delete my record. Then instead of five, I'm gonna do 100. Just to show you guys how many operations we can save by running it this way. Okay, so if I look back on my sheet, we see that we've now added a whole whopping 100 additional rows to this. But if we look back to our, our module, we'll see that uh, it only had to consume a single op in order to, uh, to work, which is pretty cool. Why don't I go a little bit further? Why don't we just delete all of this again? And then instead of 100, why don't we just max out the data? Let's just see how many rows we can get in this puppy. I'm just gonna go all the way up, press run once. And even though we're pulling in like hundreds of records now, you can see that we just iterated through 950 records and all it consumed was a single op. Not bad if I do say so myself. So if we just take one step back and we think to how many operations it would have taken if we'd stuck with the add row, I mean, we would have iterated through this um, it would have consumed a single operation to output 950. Then we would have had to individually do 950 um, module executions for the row. That would have been 951 in total, right? We basically got 951 in total down to three. Uh, and my math ain't so good, but that's a factor of 316, almost 317 times more efficiently. So I hope that this makes sense. I hope you guys found a lot of value in this. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to um, export this right now as a blueprint, and then I'm going to put this underneath uh, the YouTube description so you guys all have access to it. But there are a few other ways you can use the bulk add to sheet functionality here, uh, the Google Sheets API. And if you guys have interest in that, just let me know. I'm more than happy to make another video. I'm um, showing you guys some of the more, uh, some of the other things that you can do with Google Sheets and, and that sort of deal. Great. I hope you guys appreciated this video. I had a lot of fun putting it together. If you have any questions or anything like that, just drop them down below as a comment. I source most of my YouTube ideas uh, from comments at this point as well. So if you want me to do something or record something specifically, then please leave that below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, do all that fun YouTube stuff, and I'll catch you on the next video.